Hello. Oh, I'm all right, Dad. How you doing? All right. What are you doing? All good. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just sitting down having a chat with uh, with the mate James. James. Oh, yeah. J- James. Oh, he all right? Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, he's a nice lad. He knows. Uh, he's had a few chats with Paul Ferris and um, Dave that. Courtney and all that lot. Who else? Right. He's, been, he's been in some good company, then. Vic Dark. Hey. Do you know Vic Dark? Yeah, Vicky Dark. I was in progress with Vicky. How was you? Yeah, East Londoner from Canning Town. Oh yeah, we were just we were just talking then about how we um how I found out I was your son. Uh well there's a lot of muppets out there who stick their nose in business that don't concern them. Now for them muppets who keep having little pops at you, don't they realise they're having a pop at me at all? Yeah, well, I'll just say to James, I don't really listen to any of this shit off anyone. We've had our DNA test done through the prison service. We know the crack, so I'm not... I don't listen to that shit, as you know. Well, the facts are on the table, right? There's no disputing that I was with your mum, right? You weren't the only one. (laughs) There's no disputing, right? We know she was a raving lunatic, but I'm like a magnet. I always magnetise lunatics to me anyway, Mm. right? So that, that's not disputed. Second of all, all you've got to do is look at a photo of you and a photo of me. We've got the same nose, the same eye sockets, the same jawline. Any bloody idiot in the world can see you, my son. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, we were just having a little chat about it, that's all. Yeah, there's a lot of muppets out there, mate, that just want to cause problems all the time. Well, all I'll say to them muppets are, come and see me later, because I could be out at the end of this year. I know, I was just telling him about all that legal stuff. We've got this uh, this appeal we've just won, the court yeah, case. Yeah, fantastic. We've just won the High Court. I've got a public parole hearing. I'm just waiting for the date. We're going to smash it, mate. Yeah. Because for the last 50 years, uh, paroles have been held behind closed doors. Now, I've just got a new law. They've now got to be a public. So I can have the media in, the public in. There's no more sweeping my case under the mat. I know, I've got all my speech. I've done all my speech with the lawyers and that to say in court for you to stand up and tell them about all the good stuff you do. <laughs> hey, did you... Um, I've, not met, I've not told James yet. Do you... Um, you realise that, that record that we brought out, you're number one in Cyprus, number three in Sweden and number 29 in the British charts. <laughs> Did you see that on the yeah. paper on Sunday? Fucking... I know, I can't believe it. I re- you know that nasty Nick? Yeah. Now, I was only having a laugh with him. You oh, well, everyone could see that. I told him, I said, hey, you better stand down, son. I'm, I've just smashed me way into the music world. Well, what I'm going to do with nasty Nick, I'm going to offer him to come on a CD and me and him will do a duo, The Righteous Brothers. Yeah, that'll be good, won't it? So Maz is here. We've we've come up to uh, we've come up to Glasgow to see Rodney. Yeah, sad time for you, son. Oh, it's horrible, isn't it? I fucking cried my eyes out all day yesterday. So uh, yeah, so James he rang up while I was in Glasgow to come and have a chat with him. So it worked out worked out all right actually. Oh, well, that's good. How did you get on with the doctor? Did you go and see the doctor? You don't like anyone. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've got in the doctor's room. He said, hello, John. I've not seen you for years. I said, yeah, I'm in a bit of trouble, Doc. He said, what's your trouble? I said, I'm constipated. He said, how long have you been constipated for, Charlie? I said, three months. He said, you haven't had a pony for three months. <laughs> That's right. He said, well, what have you been eating apart from the prison food? I said, snooker balls. He said, you've been eating snooker balls? I said, I just said that, did I? <laughs> he said, well, what, what did you have last night for tea? Shepherd's pie. Carrots, potatoes, three blacks of blue and a pink. He said, oh my God, what did you have for breakfast 
killed it. Scrambled egg, six slices of toast, meat porridge, and a cup of rosy leaf, four blacks, a pink, a blue and a yellow. It's a wonder it's your problem, Charlie. You're not eating enough greens. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, I bet he would, yeah. Oh my god. I'll tell you what. Yeah, Jimmy's a good lad. Jimmy's been to see uh, Ronnie and Reggie, hasn't he? Yeah, years ago he went to Parkhurst to see my old mate Joe Yeah, oh, i tell you who messaged me the other day Ma- Maureen Flanagan. Oh, she's been having people messaging her saying, you don't know the craze and all this and giving her loads of grief. And she said about when he was on the roof at Broadmoor, yeah. she she walked past you with um, Ronnie and Reggie's mum, didn't she, and Charlie? Yeah, she, now, what, what, I was up on the roof. It would have been about 1981. Oh, that was the she first... Ro- to see Ronnie and uh, she, uh, she was with Charlie and Violet, Ronnie's mother. Right. And, You'd... I spent more time on Broadmoor's roof than the fucking pigeons. <laughs> so you took the roof off in 1981, 1983 and 84, wasn't it? Yeah, that was me, actually. I've been on nine prison roofs, you know, sir. I know. Actually, Broadmoor, three. Well, think of all the jobs... Liverpool, Liverpool, Parkhurst, Leicester, Hull, Winchester, Wandsworth. Nine think, roofs I've been on. Think of all the jobs you've created. <laughs> Exactly. I, so what do you reckon now about getting out? Do you reckon we've got a good chance now? We've got this public parole here in? Right, there's a possibility I could be out by the end of this year. That's a possibility. Yeah, well, this legal team we've got are brilliant, aren't they? Well, down to you, thanks to you. You're the one who got them for me. Yeah, well, we're a team, aren't we? So what, what are you... Um, Well, that's yourself. And that's myself. I've told... The way I've been behaving for the last few years, there's no reason why I can't get out. Yeah, I've told you that. Now, if I don't get out this year, it's almost certainly I'll be getting out next year, early next year. Yeah, well, look how, look how far you've come the last three years. I mean, you, you're just a complete changed man. Like I, was just, I was saying to James... You know, we've been teaching you all about remorse and re- instead of regretting stuff, because you regret taking that guy hostage because you got time in prison, now you've totally changed and now you've got remorse and, it, and and you're actually sitting there thinking, well, that poor bastard that I fucking took hostage, everything he's had to deal with all his life, and it's making you realise, you know, the, the error of your ways and realising what you've put people through rather than the consequences you've had to put up with being locked up. And that's what, and that's what the parole people want to wear. They want to wear that you're remorseful and you understand what you've done to these people. See, so, the truth is, the average screw, prison officer, who opens my door, they'll release me tomorrow because they know I'm no danger to the public. They all say that when I come and visit you. Yeah. They go on about rehabilitation. Right. I've rehabilitated myself. I'm a songwriter. I'm a singer. You're in the charts. You're not just a songwriter. You're a fucking hit. You're a hit um, pop artist. I'm a walking fucking genius. <laughs> right, so when you get out, yeah. what are you going to do? I mean, we've talked about this loads, haven't we? Yeah. Don't tell anyone. What, don't tell anyone where you're gonna go or anything. Yeah. But well, it's no secret. I've got a six birth caravan. What you sorted for me? Yeah. Brand new caravan. Uh, even though I've asked you to put bars on the windows and barbed wire on the roof, even though you won't do it, but that's my home. My six birth caravan. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do my art. Make a living with me art. I'm gonna 
going to do a lot for charities. I'm going to do me training. And work at the crime museum. I work, I've got a job at the crime museum. So there's everything waiting for me out there. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just going to enjoy my life. Can't wait. You deserve it now. You've been out of trouble for so long. I'm excited now. I can actually... I'm closer now to getting out than I've been in 40 years. And do you know what's really good now? Yeah. It's like, like I've said to you, uh, over the last few years, this is the first time in your life where you've actually... You're not sat there as a lost cause. You you, you 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 actually know you've got something to work forward to now to actually get out. You've got a goal, and you know that if you smack one of the guards or hit someone, that you that's the last nail in your coffin. You're never going to get out. Do you know what? I've come to that stage in my life where I'm now able to walk away. Yeah, I mean that's massive for you, isn't it? Have you, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not far off 70 there, and I'd like to think when I'm 70, it's a couple of years' time, I should be out there enjoying what's left of my life. Have you got any regrets? Regrets? Have you got any regrets uh, at all? Have I got any? I have got one regret, just one. I missed the strange ways right by nine days. <laughs> Hey, I went, uh, you organised for me to go and meet Alan Lord, do you remember, in Manchester? Yeah. He's a lovely fella, isn't he? Yeah, he's been on. Uh, top geezer, top geezer. Yeah. He, he, he got a life sentence when he was young. He spent about, I don't know, it must have been about 28, 29 years locked up. Uh, he learned his lesson. He's out there now, works in a gym. He turned his life round. Yeah, we sent him, lovely, we sent him some. Mate. We sent him some money to help fix the roof in the gym, didn't we? Yeah, he's a. Lo- he's a lovely bloke. Have you? Um, What's Vicky Dark doing there? Yeah, Vic's doing good. I don't know Vicky Dark. Yeah, he's doing well. Well, if you bump into him, just give him my respects because it was an absolute pleasure to do a bit of porridge with that man. And an absolute pleasure to do a bit of porridge. Hey, I was telling, I was saying about there's no porridge in prison anymore. You have to have Rice Krispies now, don't you? It's outrageous, isn't it? If I was walking around an exercise yard 40 years ago and I said to someone, well, do you know what? In 2021, I'll be buying the arm porridge. They would have looked at me and said, Charlie, you need to go back to Broadmoor, mate. I was just saying as well, do you remember that? Remember when I came to see you just before COVID? Yeah. And uh, I think it was at Wardell. And they took me in the wrong room and put me in with that Michael Adabawaji. Yeah, they put me in with Michael Adabawaji, didn't they? Unbelievable. I, what about when you was up in uh, Wakefield and Franklin saw them monsters? Oh, do you know what? I forgot to tell him about that. Um, when I met um, Robert Maudsley. When I met Bob Maudsley. When you said, go to the window and say hello to Bob. So I put my head up at the window. I went, all right, Bob. And he had his face about an inch from me. I went, all right, Bob, nice to meet you. And he, he looked at me and he, he opened his mouth, smiled with his teeth. And I turned around and you was in your cage pissing yourself. And I was like, I was like, what are you laughing at? And you went, do you know who that was? And I went, no. And you went, it's a fucking cannibal. 